So the other day I actually had to have very minor surgery to remove something very, very nasty inside my neck. I'm sure you can see the stitches still inside my neck. And on that basis, I really wanted to create something this week that's a little bit gory, a little bit graphic. So I thought Squid Game was the perfect tutorial. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk all things architecture and technology. Today, we're focusing on the Netflix phenomenon Squid Game. I've watched it in full from start to finish. It is incredible. I really didn't think I'd enjoy the show, especially being dubbed, but it was incredible from start to finish. So today I wanted to focus on Squid Game and focus on the red light, green light game on that very first episode that really, really hooked you into that series and made you think the world is actually a really crazy place. Today I'm actually gonna teach you exactly how to recreate that environment so that you can create your own 3D models, 3D renders, do whatever you want with this information to actually create some really, really cool content. So without me talking too much more, let's turn around to these two screens and get started with today's tutorial. Okay, so as you can see, I've got Twin Motion completely open with the Squid Games red light, green light modeled directly in here. Now, I will point out that the henchman and the actual doll itself are downloaded directly and I will leave links down below. I didn't create these two characters here. They are downloaded to make this tutorial very, very simple. But everything else that you see here has been modeled and created either via the use of Photoshop or Twin Motion. So we're keeping it very, very simple and very, very generic. So if I fly around relatively quickly, you'll see that we have those extremely high, 10 meter high walls. We have that nasty tree behind the doll and we have our two henchmen on the left and right of the doll as well as our creepy little hut in the background. So the fundamentals of this is very simple and it's very, very easy to create. We can do this in a matter of minutes. So I'm gonna keep this tutorial very quick and very brief. Show you exactly how I did this. Let's go file, new scene, and let's start from scratch. So no, we're not gonna save absolutely anything. The first fundamental basics are to remove the background and change the sky. So if we come down here into settings, go to location, and change our background here from city to none. Then we can also come back into settings, go to our weather and introduce a couple clouds as we best see fit. Now, obviously there's nothing happening in this scene at the moment. There is basically just a blank empty shell, which is perfect for us to create our scene straight out of Squid Game. So I have saved the Squid Game guard and the Squid Game doll directly into my user library so we don't have to go through that process again. But basically it was import, import, open, find our FBX file, click open and import that directly into our scene. I'm gonna start by introducing the scary doll into our scene right there and then actually placing her straight on the ground so she isn't floating in the middle of the air. Next, I'm gonna introduce two of our squid guards directly next to our doll and making this scene really come to life. Now, as you can tell, these characters are the fundamental essentials in this whole design. Everything else comes together relatively simply and relatively quickly. Now, to create that tree behind our doll, we wanna come into our trees and we wanna search for a tree that is relatively similar to what was on the show. If you saw the original show, you'd see that the tree branches actually fall down instead of going up too much. So let's select this red oak, for example, clicking on it and changing the season to winter you'll see that it's quite similar to the tree behind her. So if we just increase the size of that tree just so slightly, so it looks just as creepy, just as realistic on Netflix. Next, we wanna create the scene around her and this is where we start introducing a secondary program to actually create the scene we need. So if we come back all the way into our library, go to our objects and go primitive, we can introduce our box, which is 10 meters by 10 meters. So clicking escape, let's place our box directly behind our doll. Let's make that five times longer. So it's about 50 meters wide and 10 meters tall. If we fly up a little bit, you'll see it's 10 meters deep as well, but that's not too important for us at the moment. Next, we're gonna hold shift, rotate that 90 degrees and make sure we make a copy 
to be able to then move our secondary box all the way across, line it up corner to corner. Next, we're gonna hold shift again, pulling our secondary box all the way across, lining up our corners, creating a copy and doing the same thing to close in that environment. So now we have our four boxes created. We've basically created that entry that our contestants walk into from Squid Game and they come directly into this creepy doll with a couple of henchmen standing beside her as well. So if we rotate some of our henchmen, we can start to see that realistic looking scene directly from Netflix. Next, we want to change the material of the ground. So if we come to material, we go to ground, we go nature, and let's change that to something like rocky dirt. So it is quite harsh and quite textured. Finally, we want to introduce that red line and that'll be basically all of our elements from Twin Motion. So if we come back into our objects, go to our primitives and go box one meter by one meter, introducing that anywhere for the time being, tabbing through and reducing that 0 0.05, 0 0.1 and extending that 10 times and 10 times wider. So we want that to go through both sides of our box so we can create the finish line. I'm again gonna reduce the depth of this by another 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to make it a really skinny line put it right near our henchman and change the overall color from white to a nice finish line red. Again, let's double that, make that a little bit thicker and place it in front of our henchman. So now, as you can see, we have four bounding boxes around our doll and our henchman, our one large tree in the center and our red line that is the finish for all the contestants. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure you check out the links down below. There is some really good content in each one of those links. For example, there is a great checklist for all of your architecture, work and drawing construction documentation, as well as a Discord group chat with professionals, students, and everybody in the architecture industry from around the world that is continuously helping each other grow. My Archicad files and Twin Motion files are available to download as well via the Patreon link down below the Discord chat. So if you do want a copy of anything that I create for YouTube, it is available via Patreon. Now to create the background of this scene, I've actually gone into Photoshop and done a little bit of photo manipulation. So as you can see here, I've Photoshopped these little huts that we saw on the show directly into this grass here. So if we go File, New, I've set up the settings by going to centimeters, going width is going to be 100, height is going to be 400, and then clicking Create. Now I've done that incorrectly, so I'm just gonna go Image, Image Rotation, Rotate 90 degrees to give us the foundation of what we're looking for. Now, we obviously wanna find this background, which is just directly off Google, it's a free image. So what I've done is gone to Google and searched for dry grass background. Go onto my images and try to find something that would be really good for that image. After a little bit of searching, I managed to find this image here, which I thought was relatively good and relatively simple to edit. So we've just gone copy and pasted that directly in. What we wanna do then is press Control T, holding our Alt button, we can increase the size of that to the maximum size we possibly can. Next, holding Alt again, I've copied it all the way across, aligned it, Command T and rotated horizontally. So it aligns perfectly and duplicated over to the other side as well. So now as you can see, it's a very clear distinction in the sky that we've repeated this pattern. But overall in the actual grass itself, it isn't too bad, it isn't too horrendous. So now I'm gonna hold shift and select all of these down below, then press control E to merge them all into one file. Now I do this so I can simply replace the sky in this whole process. If you've never done a sky replacement in Photoshop, it is incredibly easy with the latest update. You simply go to edit, sky replacement, let Photoshop do its thing in the background as it creates that replacement. So I've just selected the generic sky. It'll quickly and easily replace that whole scene. Next, all I do is click OK. Sky replacement, again, shifting all of them, Command, Control, E, all of them merges them down into one single layer. Now, if you notice on the show that there are two different types of backgrounds on the left and right hand side, there is this image without the huts and on the front and back, there is the huts themselves. So we'll just go Control, Shift, S, and we can save a left and right PNG. 
I've already done it, so I'm just gonna save over them. Go replace, yes, largest file possible, please. Now well, that saves, we're gonna come back into Google and we're gonna go squid game, red light, green light scene. Go back to our images, find a good red light, green light scene where we can see that background hut. So right click, copy image, come back into Photoshop, wait for that to finish loading. Okay, so now we paste our image. As you can see, it is absolutely tiny. So again, Command T or Control T, depending on the system you're on, expanding it by holding the Alt button to keep it in proportion, and then simply just cutting out our little hut over here. So by using our lasso tool, we can go around the hut, Control C, Control Shift V, paste it in the same place, and we can delete our layer below. Next, you'll see that we've cut off a little bit of our corner of our hut. So let's just simply copy and paste half of this hut over, pressing Command T, reflecting it or flipping it horizontally, aligning it with where it needs to be, pressing OK, and then tapping our eraser tool, right clicking to be able to introduce our eraser and just making sure that looks a little bit nicer. Now we have our one hut created and on the show it sits roughly about here and it is relatively small at the same time. It is not overly large. We do again then wanna change our eraser to a little bit of a softer brush, get rid of all of this yellow dry tall grass that is originally from the show so we can introduce our own grass overlapping over it. So it looks like that hut is sitting in our tall grass, copying and pasting it across by holding the Alt button, Control or Command T to make it a little bit smaller and moving it into the distance to give it a bit of perspective and depth, even though it is meant to be a very flat 2D image. Finally, Shift, click them all, Command E, Control Shift S, and we can replace it with our rear image here. So save and yes. Okay, now that all those images are saved, we can go back into twin motion, come all the way back, go to our objects, pick a decal, doesn't matter which decal we click. So let's just pick zebra crossing for the purposes of this. Select on our crossing, go to texture, open and replace that with our rear texture. As you can see, it'll pop up relatively out of proportion. So we're gonna go into size, more. We're gonna scale that to four times and we're gonna scale that, I believe, to 20 times is perfect. If I zoom out a little bit, we can then position that exactly as we need. So let's just move that the tiniest bit up so it covers the top of our building and keep sliding across. There we go. So now we have our building in the background and all we need to do is repeat that step for the remaining walls. And there we have it, our red light, green light scene completely manufactured in record time, simply using twin motion, some incredibly detailed characters that we've been able to download online and a little bit of creative Photoshop. Once you've completed all these steps, you can go ahead and export all sorts of different images, little videos. You can use this content basically however you want to create whatever you want with this incredible realistic Squid Games recreation of the red light, green light game. Anyway, that's all for me today guys. A very short, very quick tutorial on how you can create your very own Squid Game in a matter of minutes. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today from the stitches and from all the medication to keep me going strong, but I am still putting in the hard yards to make sure I bring you guys one video every single week, every single Monday. So like always, I will see you next Monday.